Abandoned Ship, a seafaring strategy game very much in the same shipping lane as FTL, has just launched on Steam Early Access. I've been playing it quite a lot this week, and I think it's fair to say it's one of the most promising Early Access games I've ever played. I go so far as to say, in fact, that it might just be better than FTL, the game that defined this kind of strategy experience for a lot of players. So what exactly is Abandoned Ship, and what makes it so special? Man the cannons and watch out for tentacles, mates, because I'm about to tell you. Spoilers ahead for the very start of the game. So, as I already mentioned, Abandoned Ship has a lot of similarities to FTL. You play as the captain of a ship, sailing the oceans and trying to stay one step ahead of your pursuers. The action is split between exploration, during which time you need to manage the three main resources, that's supplies, money and morale, and tense ship-to-ship -ship battles. In these battles, you're free to pause at any time as you send your crew members scuttling about to manage navigation, weapons, healing up and, very importantly, fixing broken bits of the ship as you try to send your adversaries to a watery grave. All very structurally similar, I think you'll agree, but where Abandoned Ship really shines is where it strikes out on its own. For one thing, the framing is just brilliant. At the start of the game, it turns out you're part of a shadowy cult, summoning something unspeakable from the depths in a grim, eldritch ritual. At the crucial moment, however, you realise your heart's not really in this occult business anymore, so you bash two colleagues over the head, release a bunch of prisoners, and escape with them on the high seas. And so your quest to escape the clutches of these evil cultists begins, pitting you and your wits against the sea, the ships upon it, and even some truly monstrous things below. The cultists, for their part, are really nicely fleshed out. They feel like a genuine menace, mainly down to the fact they catch up with you a lot. Instead of a steadily advancing red line, the cultists on your tail are represented by a little tracker at the bottom of the screen. When it fills up, you'll either be ambushed by an elite cultist ship, an invasion from some horrible sea monsters called Halifron, more on those later, or, you know, they'll just throw a kraken at you. An honest-to-goodness kraken. These guys are not messing around. The result is that the cultists feel like a very real threat with a great deal of personality. And it creates a really menacing atmosphere that pervades the rest of the action. Which is great because the rest of the action is actually pretty pleasant. See, where FTL is a series of fuel-consuming jumps into single-screen environments and encounters, advancing across the map in abandoned ship is a much more involved affair. Each advancement to a new node on the map, as it were, puts you into an open area with a number of attached sea gates through which you might be able to go. Each gate will only open once you've had a sufficient number of encounters, however, forcing you to patrol the seas and deliberately seek out trouble. The result is that you advance more slowly across the map, yes, but the process feels a lot more involved. Each blip on the map has more weight and consequence to it. You might roar into one area feeling like Blackbeard himself, only to find you're limping into the next one and wondering which crew member you'd eat first, given the choice. As for the encounters you have in each area, these can be as simple as going fishing or finding a bit of jets and bobbing on the waves, and of course you can expect your resources to wax and wane depending on your luck. More often than not, of course, encounters are mainly comprised of squaring up to a ship and blowing it to bits. The combat in Abandoned Ship will feel very familiar to anybody who's played even a little bit of FTL. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it assumes players already have some experience with its spacefaring counterpart. As such, it expands on the brilliant system of its predecessor to make things a bit more hands-on. For anyone who hasn't played FTL, however, here's how combat works in Abandoned Ship. Your ship squares up to another one, and it's up to you to deploy your crew members where they'll be most useful. Typically, this means putting someone at the helm, helping you control your distance from the other ship. This can have a bearing on what weapons you use, for example, with some best suited to short-range combat and others capable of dealing damage from afar. Weapons are the other important consideration because without people loading and firing the cannons, you won't be able to deal any damage and your demise will be assured. There are also repairs to consider as taking damage to any one part of the ship may well render that thing useless until it's fixed. 
In the case of the first aid station or your ship's guns, this can be disastrous. So it's worth keeping an eye on your ship's health at all times and deploying crew members whenever necessary to patch things up. There are fires to put out, cracks in the hull to repair and flood water to pump away which can stretch your resources to the limit, especially when you're already short on crew members. And that's before those pesky Halifron even climb aboard. Halifron! The Halifron, as I mentioned earlier, are scummy, watery bastards. They're nasty, spiky human-fish hybrids and in a hand-to-hand -hand battle with a single crew member, they will win more often than not. The best way to take them on is to set two crew members on a single one and hope to either kite or bottleneck the rest, but if too many climb aboard, you're basically boned. They're an absolute menace, in other words, so really it's no wonder the sailor's voice cracks whenever he shouts about them approaching. Halifron! Anyway, all of this is to say that keeping things running smoothly in abandoned ship is pretty hands-on. All going well in FTL, for example, you can sit with your crew members manning their own bits of the ship and wait as the enemy hull just automatically ticks down to zero. Things can easily snowball if they go badly, of course, but in FTL, your systems are largely automated. Having a crew member in each station is important, but it's also important to understand that while manning a station, they're only providing a buff. In abandoned ship, however, a crew member has to be there for the system to function at all. If there's nobody around to fire the cannon, in other words, then it's not going to go off. Basically, this means the power distribution mechanic from FTL has been pulled out and rolled into crew management, which is actually pretty nifty and true to the historical setting. Because you need crew members to man things in order for them to work, the timing of your weapons becomes quite important, especially when there are other things like repairs to consider at the same time. Prioritising those functions, in other words, is more of an active consideration, because if the hull is leaking, it will continue to get worse until the ship sinks, so you have no choice but to fix it. This, in turn, will force you to choose between leaving a cannon battery unmanned for a time, or aborting a manoeuvre that would get you close enough to ram the other ship. Outside of combat, there are plenty of upgrades readily available for your ship if you have the coin, which make things pretty interesting, as is the ability to bring the ship about. That is, the ability to change which side is pointing at the enemy. To any landlubbers listening, this basically means you can customise each side of your ship and have two different loadouts. It makes for a bit of micromanaging, but you can happily have your port side reserved for medium or long range combat while your starboard side is outfitted for close range encounters. Anyway, that's enough about how the combat works mechanically. The important bit is that it's fierce and it's fun, and there's something about the setting that lends it a sense of immediacy, which sometimes admittedly makes me miss the floaty, almost ethereal feel to FTL ship to ship battles, but it has its own charms nonetheless. With so many encounters happening in each area, mind you, the length of the game can really start to weigh heavily on your hull. But at least there's always hope. In just a couple of hours, I went into a good three or four different encounters, assuming this was it for my ship, but I managed to pull through anyway, and those moments were really exciting. But while so much of the game feels delightfully like squeaky bum time, it has to be said that it's also quite forgiving when it comes to actually dying. As long as the captain is alive, says the game, there is always hope, meaning while death is permanent, things aren't actually over if your ship goes down. I wrecked mine a good three or four times, for example, and always found myself getting saved in the nick of time while floating about on a plank of wood. Unaccountably, this then landed me back in port with a brand new ship, no matter how much or little money I had to my name when the last one went down. I've yet to finish a full playthrough of Abandoned Ship as yet, and I haven't actually died either, so I'm not entirely sure just how forgiving it is. So far, at least, the answer seems to be... very. And that's a weird tension, because there were a few times when I thought I properly died, only to find, well, that I hadn't. And I felt like it had been a bit soft on me, to be honest. But anyway, that minor shortcoming aside, all of this is to say that Abandoned Ship is great. Is it better than FTL? I honestly think it might be too close to call. In some ways, I definitely think it's more refined, but it doesn't have quite the same feeling of running a gauntlet. You'll probably know for yourself by now whether or not you're interested, but personally, I think it's well worth a look in. Anyway, hopefully you found this video interesting and or useful. If you did, there are plenty more for you to watch from Eurogamer, so click away if you fancy it. Do like and subscribe as well if you feel like it, there's no pressure. Either way, thank you very much for watching, and have a lovely day.